Good day and welcome to the Classroom Professor Math Podcast. This program is designed to help you to prepare and teach mathematics more easily, efficiently and effectively to truly engage your students in mathematical thinking and to develop their numeracy. Hello everyone, this is Peter Price. Welcome to episode two of this podcast. This episode is entitled Place Value Slides. We're talking today about multiplying and dividing by powers of 10, and I'm sure you know as a maths teacher that that's something that's done quite often. Um, for example, um, here in Australia we use the metric system of measurement we have done for a long time, so it's quite common to have students face questions like this. We're asking students to convert from one metric unit to another, and of course the metric units are based on powers of 10, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000 and so on. And so knowing how to multiply or divide by those powers of 10 is a, is a really useful skill, not just for the metric system but for all sorts of other maths as well. So in this example, just to use this one, 6.5 kilograms would be how many grams? The students need to know of course that a kilogram is a thousand grams. So to convert this way, we need to multiply by a thousand. So we say to our students, what happens when we multiply 6.5 or six and five tenths by a thousand? And of course the answer is 6,500. Now the resource we're talking about is the place value slide. I don't know if you've come across those before. Something I learned about a few years ago and I found it uh, a very, very useful resource a little bit more difficult to make than the one I introduced last time, the 10 frames, but I think the effort is worth it. So the resource that you can download today um, has three pages to it. The first page shows the slide itself, or rather the, the frame for the slide. The second page has the bit that does the sliding in two parts, and I'll explain in a moment how all this works, and the third page is the instructions. So. I'll just rub this bit out. Here's a finished slide. So it's basically, it works best if it's on cardboard. So this is a piece of light cardboard just run straight through the printer or you could do multiple copies with a photocopier. And it has this sliding piece that goes um, behind the, the frame. On the back there are three strips of cardboard to hold that in place. Now there are ways to improve the design of this. Uh, for the first thing you could have another piece of cardboard on the back glued at the top and the bottom uh, to avoid this fiddly bit here. The other thing which my wife has pointed out is that the slide being made in two pieces and glued in the middle tends to get caught behind the windows so uh, you might want to come up with other ways of doing that. And certainly I think a longer piece of card here would uh, work more smoothly. So I'll just attach this and show you how it works. So if I just position that slide like that, I'll write a number, I might use red this time, to show in the windows here and I'll make it a number that uses hundreds, tens and ones and tenths. So let's make whoops, 200 and 73.5. Now if we wanted to multiply that by 10, of course everything has to get bigger. With the place value slide, it's a simple matter of sliding that one place to the left, and of course the two moves into the thousands column, the seven into the hundreds and so on, and we have the number 2735. Let me move it back to where it was to start with. If we wanted to divide it by 10, we just slide it in the other direction. And there's that piece getting caught, just as my wife said it would. There we go. And then we have 27.35. Now you'll be able to see that if we take this too far, we're going to run out of digits. So we might need to put a zero in here. So that's what we would get if we multiplied it by 100, uh, 27,350. If you want to have a thousands marker, depending on where 
uh, your teaching you may or may not use a marker in Australia we're not supposed to so we have a space but I know in many countries they have a, a comma in there the decimal marker similarly you could change that and I know that in European countries they use a comma there for the decimal mark so you could change that and not have a, a comma there so as you can see we can slide this almost any no well it's limited by the number of places but we can slide it a long way left or right now what's the point this is quite fiddly to make and if you've never used one before then you've no doubt been teaching this sort of topic without having it before I'm going to move this out of my way because I can't work with it there the alternative which is quite common in maths classes is to do something like this and say here's an example 2.37 multiplied by 10 what do we do the typical response I hear from my students is oh we move the decimal point here's the decimal point I'm going to move the decimal point to there that will give me my answer 23.7 that's the correct answer but is this the correct method it gives you the right answer but the problem is that it's it's not truthful to what's really happening to say that the decimal point moves is a misstatement decimal points don't move decimal points are a marker between the whole part of a number in this case the 2 and the fractional part of a number in this case the 0.37 or the 3 tenths and 7 hundredths when we get this new number 23.7 the decimal point is still between the ones and the tenths just as over here the decimal point was between the ones and the tenths so really the decimal point didn't move and if we tell our students just move the decimal point it's not stating what's really happening decimal points are not moving the digits themselves are moving so if we take this number 2.37 multiply each part by 10 the two ones multiplied by 10 becomes 20 or two tens and that's what that's showing there the three tenths become three ones and so on so what's really happening is the digits are moving and of course that's what the place value slide shows as I demonstrated before so as we slide this the digits themselves move to a new place and the decimal point stays right where it is as it should so this is certainly fiddly to make there's some parts to the construction of this that you wouldn't get students to do for example especially cutting the windows out and I cut those out in a couple of minutes that's all using a sharp knife and a, and a, a ruler and something to rest it on but you wouldn't get children to do that so there's a bit of work in putting it together but the alternative of simply moving decimal points I think um, is not to be recommended the other problem with this method in my view about teaching students to move the decimal point is that they get confused about which way to do it I mentioned in the last podcast episode that I'm a lecturer of pre-service teachers so I have students who are going to be teachers many of whom have just come from high school finished year 12 the year before maybe a couple of years earlier many of them have trouble with this lots of them far too many of them have trouble with this and one of the biggest problems they have is they can't remember which way to move the decimal point so they've learned this as a routine to say oh yes we've got to move the decimal point but then they'll say which way do I have to move it do I move it to the left or the right and of course to explain which way the decimal point moves you have to un disconnect it from the mathematics and instead of saying well think of the two if you multiply 2 by 10 what do you get the answer is 20 what is often done instead is to talk about a rule and say well you're going to move the decimal point if you're multiplying you move it to the right if you're dividing you move it to the left um, and it's all very very confusing so that's my recommendation for this week use a place value slide we've got the resource there for you to download and there are some worksheets uh, for you to download as well that go with it thank you for joining us at the classroom professor math podcast you can contact me via email at peter at classroomprofessor.com and you can follow me on Twitter with the username Peter underscore Price. We'd love you to visit our website 
it's classroomprofessor.com where we currently have the free ebook for download 10 minutes a day times tables worksheets if you've enjoyed the show please go to itunes and rate the show and i look forward to speaking with you next time until then goodbye <laughs>